Hey guys, it's Sean McCormack and just looking at one of the new features here from Lightroom Mobile. So I have my iPhone set up on a tripod um, using an iographer kit just with a, a telephoto lens so that I can kind of zoom into this fruit, just random fruit that I have here just for a variety of different colours. There's no blue fruit though, so it's not RGB. Um, so to, it's a pretty dull day outside. I would show more of what's going around except it's really really messy around this area so I have a silver white reflector so if I pull it away you can see what it's doing there so the silver has a big kick of light to add in uh, it's a last of light tri grip silver so what I'm going to do is show you the difference between DNG and JPEG so what I'm, do is I'm just going to very gently press the uh, button take a picture then I press the word DNG in the middle on the left. I'm going to swap it to JPEG and now I'm going to take another picture. So I have two pictures taken which are going to sync up and go to Lightroom on the desktop where we show it on the desktop. Hey folks, we're back inside Lightroom now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to press the I key to bring up information. That's if it wants to work. There we go. So we see this is the JPEG. So I go backwards, we see the DNG. So Going backwards and forwards, you can see that the JPEG is actually a little bit more saturated. But I'm also seeing a lot of this blue noise uh, chromatic aberration, which is from the lens adapter I'm using. It's not as strong in the DNG. Okay, so let's just zoom in here to the edges. Now we are getting a bit of distortion from my lens. But if we look here, we can see there's a fair bit of noise there. If we go back to JPEG, there's a lot more noise reduction going on here. So it's a bit noisier with the DNG. However, the whole point of using a DNG is we can go to develop and we have options for what we can do. So we're talking about the noise. Well, we can bring up some luminous noise reduction. Okay, and I think we need smoothness to go up as well here. Because a lot of that noise I think is kind of color noise. So, right, that chromatic aberration is obviously annoying me. Um, so I'm just going to click here to get rid of it. It's well, hopefully get rid of it. Yeah, there we go. So that's obviously way better than JPEG straight off the bat from that. Now it's only embedded. Okay, so I was just wondering if there was other profiles available. To basic, a little bit of vibrance, maybe a tiny bit of saturation because that's what I'm detecting as a big difference. So. Yeah, still needs a bit more. Now, obviously, I've slightly moved in the camera position as well. So, okay, now the JPEG is less saturated, so that's too much. So, as you can see, the differences are fairly, fairly subtle. But you do have way more options for doing stuff afterwards, like with detail. I could bring up and change the sharpening as well, so I can make a much sharper image. So, although the base setting is a bit noisier on the DNG. Uh, you do have a little bit more control like for example here if I go up for white balance I know that I've got a particular white balance in there or not whereas if I go to uh, the JPEG the JPEG just has plus or minus now I haven't uh, particularly done anything we can see here it says this says we've got a blown highlight so we go back to the DNG we can see we don't have a blown highlight here so we have recovered some stuff here so straight away there's automatically better highlights and obviously more control over your white balance so that is the benefit but again the base noise it does seem to be slightly noisier than the jpeg